battery pack being in the floor helps. <laughs> it's a lightning bolt. Hey crew, I've got the key to that McLaren Artura. We are going to take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. This is McLaren's first series production hybrid, and it's intended to replace the 570S as their starting point supercar. Up here at the nose, we've got a distinctive aero sculpted face with black gloss and lots of functional cooling. The signature crescent headlights with projector LEDs above some LED DRLs and turn signals. This paint job is called Silica White. It's a no cost color. At the side, is a set of forged alloy wheels, 19s in the front, 20s at the rear, wrapped in Pirelli P0 Corsa tires, 235 section front, 295 at the rear. Within those wheels are standard carbon ceramic brakes with available orange painted calipers. Above the front wheels are these louvers to extract the turbulent moving air out of the wheel arches and channel it underneath the door mirrors, beneath these sculpted door handles and into the air intakes. Above those, we find some floating buttresses and beneath this metal engine grate, which looks okay, I guess. It'd be nice if there was a glass partition letting you look in at the three liter twin turbo V6 beneath. Stepping back to look at the profile, it is a very wind swept silhouette with more continuous panels now than the 570S, including the rear clamshell that's one piece of aluminum. On this side, we find the charge port door, and the other side is the fuel door. At the back are some very thin LED tail lights and turn signals. Those above more mesh cutouts, two center exit exhaust ports, and that's all over this gloss black diffuser. Though it is a gentle evolution of the 570S design, I think this is the prettiest McLaren yet. What do you guys think? Is this better or worse looking than the 570S predecessor? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up the dihedral doors, which each only weigh 24 pounds and looking inside at this Baltimore colored interior. In other words, it's black with a suede wrapped headliner, leather seat borders, suede inserts, and orange piping on these power adjusting comfort seats. McLaren also offers new club sport seats that are each 20 pounds lighter. You can pull these tabs to access a parcel, parcel, parcel shelf. That was really hard for me to say. And hit this button here to pop up the front trunk with five cubic feet of space. I did manage to fit myself inside. On the doors, we find a mixture of leather, suede, and aluminum with one touch windows and door handle poles. There's a standard Bowers and Wilkins sound system. And get this, this is the first time McLaren's offering a subwoofer in one of its cars. So what did they do? They integrated it within the new carbon fiber chassis of this car. That's how committed they are to the sound system in the Artura. Drivers get a leather wrapped steering wheel with a flat bottom. It feels great in the hands, as do these giant aluminum paddles. Good travel to those. There's a digital instrument cluster and the whole housing moves with the steering wheel adjustment down and up and the graphics change with your drive mode that you now select on the right side of the housing and your suspension adjustments are on the left side. The idea for the placement of these settings is that you can do it while you're holding onto the steering wheel. Here in the center of the cockpit is a floating eight inch touchscreen with a volume knob slash home button off to the right. The graphics are really sharp. It's very responsive, easy to use, and it's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Above that screen on the dashboard is suede wrapping, orange piping. We have four visible air vents, a couple are here, another one there. Your gear selection and start stop button under the suede wrapped console is a skinny bit of storage with a DC outlet and two USB ports, one A, one C. Visibility is phenomenal for a supercar. No blind spot monitoring or rear cross traffic, but they have added adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning. Those features are kind of unheard of in supercars. Oh, and I gotta show you the headroom situation because I've got plenty of it. I can put on a helmet for track duty, no problem. It gets a thumbs up from me. And this cabin sticks with the minimalist theme for McLaren with nice upgrades. It also retains that driver focus. 
so let's go do some driving. All right, let's fire it up. And that is the sound, or lack thereof, of the future of the supercar. And I'll tell you first why that's great, later I'll tell you why it's not. To start, why it's awesome. I was able to leave my home early this morning, open the dihedral door, sit in the seat, hit the start-stop button, and then slink out of the area, disturbing precisely no one. In all of the Arturo's competitors, doing the startup sequence alone would have ignited some internal combustion motor, caused a ruckus, and at the very least made my neighbors twitch in their beds. The Artura is how you avoid angry letters from your neighbors. That's, that's just what it is. Before we get moving, let's look at the capacity, or rather the charge left in the battery. It says we've got 68%, and that equates to 11 miles of range. When I unplugged the Artura this morning, it was at 100% charge, and it said I had 18 miles of range. But that figure is based on the Euro test circuit. Here in the US, they test vehicles differently, and the estimated range peak from McLaren is about 11 miles, what we're seeing right here. So at 68% charge, that's equivalent to, what, seven miles that we have left in the battery? It doesn't sound like a ton, but let's get moving and talk more about that later. To go into reverse, hit the reverse button here, and that will bring up a bird's eye view here with some parking sensors and a backup camera here with trajectory lines. To disengage the parking brake, press that tab, And one cool fact is that the McLaren Artura doesn't have a reverse gear. Oh, to go into drive, you can either pull the paddle or hit the D button there. It doesn't have a reverse gear. It just spins the electric motor in reverse. It's kind of cool. We'll start off with a turning radius test, as we usually do. So here we are, fully cranked. And thanks to a short wheelbase, we are able to pivot around in just one go. And if we're disturbed about some bumps in the road, we can raise the nose to avoid any scraping. Turn signal sound. It's not my favorite noise in the world. It's not bad. World famous horn test. Whoa, that's quite loud. So here we are traveling in electric mode, but we gotta talk about the full powertrain setup. So we have mid-mounted, a twin turbocharged three liter V6 paired with that electric motor that is housed between the engine and an eight speed automatic gearbox, sending all of the power to the rear tires. How much power, Miles? Well, 671 horsepower and 531 pound feet of torque. I say that, but here in electric mode, we're only using the 95 horsepower electric motor. And so it's enough for scooting around town, but if you need to floor it, which I've been doing for the last five seconds, very little will happen. And what's great about that is that in some EVs or plug-in hybrid EVs, if you floor it, the gas engine will just take over. It'll turn on and it's like, you need all the power. In this one, it won't. So you could just stay in electric mode for as long as the battery holds out, which admittedly is not a terribly long amount of time, but it might be enough for some people. If you wanted to commute in your Artura and you were able to use the electric battery to take you to a freeway on-ramp where you could then toggle on one of the gas engine modes, to then charge your battery for the extent of time till you get to the freeway off ramp, then you could go back to electric mode and have the electrification take you all the way to your office parking lot. In theory, I mean, that's just one circumstance that I could see you being able to optimize this setup. And if not, then you just use it to silently get in and out of your neighborhood. Either way, your fuel economy does benefit, and this battery is just so simple to charge, either in motion from the gas engine or plugged into a 110 household outlet. In like two and a half hours, it's fully replenished. Now to talk about the ride quality in the Artura, which is 
far and away one of my favorite things about this vehicle just moseying about because thanks to the second generation of McLaren's adaptive dampers and the fact that they mounted the gas engine and the electric motor on a liquid platform which reduces vibrations the ride is so supple and smooth that this is probably if not at least tied with my favorite daily driving supercar the Acura NSX and in my mind that is lofty territory these seats are fantastically comfortable as well not the most thickly padded things but their ergonomic shape means that the blood is always flowing and one more daily driver note most PHEVs have adjustable regen braking settings that's not the case here in the Aventura. You can take your foot off the throttle and there is some slowing that happens from braking regeneration, but it's not something that you can control, showing me that McLaren wants the focus of driving the Aventura around town to be on ease of use and comfort. And then, when you wanna go fast, that's the other focus. So let's hit this tab, hear that gas engine kick on, go into the track drive mode and prepare for a launch control for our real world 0 to 60 test. To see how we do, I've got my race box set up here and then for launch control, I've got to be stopped fully and here with the left stock, I pull in to accept foot left hard on the brake, pin the throttle, build up the boost, it says go. got to 60 before I had to pull off the throttle so that we didn't sidestep too much. Bogged off the line. That's the rear drive setup and that's the real world nature of this test. I wasn't on a track so I couldn't get a ton of heat into these P0 courses. So our 0 to 60 is 3.94 seconds. Now if all the conditions were right, McLaren says this car should get to 60 a full second quicker than we did. So 2.9 seconds. Using these paddles, which are so fun to actuate. The shifts are prompt. And what do we think about the engine note? With this sports exhaust, the note is more prominent than without it. But this is the other part of the hybridized setup that I mentioned in the beginning. Some was good in terms of being able to slink out of your neighborhood without making noise. But the bad part is that engines have to accommodate the weight of an electric architecture. They've had to downsize in displacement and cylinder count. And the engine note has suffered with that. And jumping back to the commuter's perspective, let's take things out of track. We'll go to comfort for suspension and powertrain and listen for the NVH level. Really not bad. With a little throttle input, we get some drone from that engine, especially when it gets into that eighth gear. But the wind and tire noise are kept to such minimums. that the Artura once again emphasizes its daily driver friendliness. How friendly is it to the performance driver though? Let's, let's go find out. All right, we are back at track powertrain, track handling. I've got stability control, which you can operate independently of the drive and handling modes on fully to start. And we're starting out in the auto mode for the transmission before we then explore the manual modes, just to see how we get on. And that is with quite a bit of power. And significant agility. And the reason for that is twofold. One, the Artura is the lightest vehicle in its class, which is especially impressive considering it is a hybrid and so it does have the extra weight of the battery and EV motor. 
while competing with non-hybrids. It's still lighter. We also have that shorter wheelbase. And so it kind of darts into corners. And the stability through the corner is also twofold. One, now that those P0 courses have some heat in them, they provide excellent grip. And two, the center of gravity in this car is very low. The battery pack being in the floor helps. <laughs> it's a lightning bolt! But also, because McLaren was able to engineer the V of this V6 with ultra-wide cylinder banks, not quite as wide as, of course, a flat six, but certainly wider than a traditional V. And so that meant they could put the engine lower in the chassis and inherently lower that center of gravity. The power out of a corner is excellent thanks to a new electronic limited slip differential is a departure from the brake-based torque vectoring system that McLaren's typically use. And so it shuttles the power between those rear tires instantly. The steering is phenomenal and typical McLaren stuff thanks to the fact that they retained the hydraulic rack. So I've got oodles of feel here and I would be remiss if I didn't mention that all of this is based on a new carbon fiber monocoque chassis designed around that electrified powertrain these carbon ceramic brakes really put the kibosh on board momentum and the small distance of pedal travel means that you get into the breadth and depth of the braking straight away. Light, agile, planted, powerful. That is the Artura, and that's just the McLaren way. I'll try now the manual mode. while the gear changes are pretty spot on in track mode. It is nice to have full control. Holy cow! their craft exceptionally well. I misjudged the Artura. When they revealed it, I saw photos and I saw just a slightly prettier 570S but with the weight of electrification and this transition away from internal combustion, and I just, I got sad. But this car is so sensational to drive. And I should never have second-guessed McLaren. I love manipulating this machine. Some supercars act like they know better than you. And it may be true, but I don't want to sense that. The McLaren Artura in no way makes you feel like you are being withheld from the full engagement factor. All of your controls are so dialed and the feedback is so palpable. That you can't 
can't help but be 100% involved in what you're doing. And I say all this having had traction and stability control on this entire time. But that also goes to show how good this car is mechanically. That at no point in time have I, have I sensed that my drive is being handicapped by traction or stability control. This is just a feat. That's a cool little machine there. That's gonna lead me into my miles per hour word of the day. Not that machine, but the way the McLaren's driving. Which is exacting, meaning high demand on one's skill. And that's both true of the driver of the McLaren Artura and the vehicle itself, because to get the most out of this machine, you have to demand a lot from your skill set. But at the same time, you can demand great performance from the Artura, and it will deliver. At what cost, though, you ask? Well, before we talk pricing and competition, you know what? Add a manual. Let's go into sport. Let's talk about the top speed and fuel economy for this Artura. Top speed is an eye-watering 205 miles per hour, while the fuel economy is, if you've got the battery in play, the electric motor helping you out, we've got 39 combined MPG equivalent. If you don't have that, if you've tapped it, then you're looking at just 18 combined MPG. Not bad for a supercar though. I've talked about the charging and look how quickly we replenished the battery just with some fun driving in track mode. So let's talk pricing now. The starting figure for the Artura is $237,500 and this vehicle as tested is a shade under 254,000 bucks. When thinking about competitors, I'm just gonna keep this discussion to vehicles in the mid 200,000s territory. I'm not gonna bring in the Acura NSX because that's significantly less expensive. And I'm not gonna bring in another plug-in hybrid supercar, the Ferrari 296 GTB, because that's significantly more expensive. So we'll just keep it to vehicles like the Lamborghini Huracan Technica that starts at $245,000. Pause, just so I can just do this. And say, wow! The Huracan Technica makes 630 horsepower, gets to 60 in 2.7 seconds, has a top speed of 200 miles per hour, and fuel economy of 15 combined. Then we've got the, what was next, Ferrari F8 Tributo that starts at $281,000. It makes 710 horsepower, gets to 60 in 2.8 seconds, and has a top speed of 212 miles per hour with fuel economy of 16 combined. And finally, the Maserati MC20 that starts at $216,000. It makes 621 horsepower, gets to 60. Oh, geez, I've got to do it again. It's another screw. In 2.9 seconds, has a top speed of 202 miles per hour and fuel economy of 17 combined. I'm just... <laughs> okay. All right. Got to reach a verdict here. The McLaren Artura is now at least tied, maybe even beating, the Acura NSX as the most livable supercar. And that's a huge win for people who want to enjoy their high performance vehicles as often as possible. It has the benefit of an electrified powertrain so you can just be silent through your neighborhood, not disturb anyone. And then it has sinister performance when you get it to the right road, you put it in the right modes, and you put your foot down. The only thing that doesn't really overwhelm me in a positive way about the McLaren Artura is that soundtrack because even as you get
get to the upper part of the rev range, you get towards that 8,800 RPM red line, there's no character that develops. And this is with the available sports exhaust. So it's not gonna sound any better from the factory. And that's a bit of a letdown. You want your supercar to be a full sensory experience. And we get 90% of that in this car. And that is a bit of a bummer. Which would I choose? The Artura, the Huracan, the F8, or the MC20? If I was just driving my car every once in a while and I just wanted to make the most noise and feel the most, I don't know, excitable, just going in a straight line even, I'd go with that Huracan Technica. But if I actually wanted to drive my supercar often and maybe take it on a trip and maybe stay friends with the people who live around me, there is no better car than the Artura. And when you do really get to have fun with it, it's incredibly rewarding. Which would you guys choose though? Would you go Artura? Would you go Huracan Technica? Would you go F.H. Rebuto or MC20? Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And before we have to prepare to stop, I'm gonna prepare to go. I'll see you next time.